Okay, so we're gonna do a Waikiki palm, beach palm is what I call this. And I have my little sketch sketched out on um, Arches 140 pound paper. And I'll try to tell you which colors I'm using as I'm going along. And um, maybe I'll just sketch in a couple of these palm trees just to give me an idea of where I want some of their fronds coming down. And I want some random shapes over on this side, so I'll just kind of lightly put some of those in. I'm not sure I like that shape I just made, so out it goes. I think I, I can make better shapes with my brush sometimes. So anyway, we'll just leave that. And over here as well, we're going to have some palm shapes going right off the side of the page. Okay, so just start with a damp brush and get your sky in there with some um, cerulean blue. Whoa. Picked up way too much paint there. That's okay, we'll go we'll go with it. Thin it out a little as we get down here. I'll leave some little patches of light color so that it, um, you know, a little bit of clouds peeking through, even though in Honolulu you, do, you don't have clouds. <laughs> Generally, there's no clouds. And I always like to put a little bit of lavender. Well, it's not lavender. It's a very diluted um, either mauve or purple. In this case, on my palette, I have dioxazine purple or um, quinacridone magenta. So I'll turn that a little bit. And um, okay, so coming down here to the horizon, I'm going to take a little tiny bit of um, cobalt blue and knock it back into the sky up there as if we've got a nice little sweep of darker color coming through because I'm looking at the sky and it doesn't look dark enough to me. So there we go, the little more cobalt in there and we'll let this fade down into the where we're going to put the water. And then on the lower part of the painting, so basically when you're looking at a landscape, you're looking at sky and land. And so you don't really have to worry too much about anything else. Sky and land. All right. Uh, this pathway here, I'm going to leave almost white, but I may put a tiny bit of um, shadow on there, just a tiny bit of a light lavenderish wash. Okay, so this is yellow ochre. I haven't mixed it with anything, it's just pure yellow ochre. and. I'm just laying it in there. What I may do is um, along this path, I may just do a couple little sweeps 
there of yellow ochre if you can you can see and then maybe just a tiny bit of this lavender here and there there we go maybe just a dash there okay and then we can kind of let that dry off so you can clean up Oops, here we go. For the first wash, um, the only other thing you can do is I might just take out a tiny bit of this blue where I have. Well, that's not being very absorbent. Just blotch out a tiny bit of the blue where those palms are because I want to lay in a little bit of um, a lemony yellow. This is a lemony yellow. It's contaminated with a little bit of green, but that's okay. I'm just going to pop that in. And the palm trees are being lit from the from the front uh, in front of us maybe with a little bit of side side light so maybe the top left has a little bit of sunlight light color hitting it and the rest is in the shade and down here we have a couple that are really getting sunlit. And I'll pop that in. And as I'm looking at the yellow that I'm using on my palette, it's a very light lemony yellow. Um, you could use, that's pretty tropical, I could use uh, more of a cad yellow as well and I may add some cad into that. But anyway, it's pretty transparent and I think it'll be, it'll do fine. So, we can sop up the paint on the, around our <clears throat> paper so that it doesn't bleed back into it. And now we wait for it to dry. I'm getting lots of nice little blooms around these palm trees, which you may like or may not like, but um, I think it looks kind of cool. Uh, right now I can go ahead and put the ocean color in, which is just going to be a deeper value of the same um, cobalt blue. You know, I could have a little bit of fun with it and add a tiny bit of, um, make it more of an aqua-y color with a little bit of um, thalo blue mixed with a cobalt. And I'll show you what that's going to look like. It's going to look like this, more of a kind of tealy blue color. And I think it's okay. I think I just would like to have a little bit of ultramarine in there. This is fun because you can add a little bit of yellow to it if you want and get a fun green. Or if you want to add, so this is just cerulean mix. It's got a tiny bit of um, leftover something or other in it, a little bit of green in it. Look what happens when you add magenta. I think that's so pretty. We may put some of that magenta in our palm trees. We'll wait till the first layer dries though. Okay, that's an interesting color palette. And then to warm it up some, you can add some burnt umber. 
and that gives you a really nice color for your poem uh, the uh, branches underneath and the um, some of the sand areas so you can kind of see where we might go with this but I do need to refill my um, ultramarine so I'll do that now I'm going to try this ultramarine light from Holbein. I've had it for a while and I haven't really used it, so I'll put it on my palette. We'll see if it'll get as dark as I want it. This is, there it is. So if I just add a tiny bit of that to this, with this cerulean, or um, phthalo blue, it'll darken it up a little. And I get something a little deeper like that. And again, this is my... Look at how beautiful that is. Talk about an emerald kind of color. It's, it looks like a gemstone. Something beautiful like a tourmaline or something like that. Okay, so um, here we go. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of that in for my ocean back here. I could leave a tiny bit of white in there to indicate wave action maybe. I only want to go to there. I don't want it really all the way across the page. And right there, there's going to be a little bush, but I kind of want that to come down here towards this walkway a little bit, so I may just make it a little larger there. Okay. And I don't mind my little, the little whites I left for a little bit of wave action. Okay, that's a very bright color for the ocean. And I could add to that a tiny bit of um, uh, turquoise. I'm just going to drop in the tiniest bit of turquoise, which is this color. And that's going to disperse some of that blue and make it look a little bit um, a little bit granulated. Okay, now let's go ahead and still kind of damp on top. The bottom is nearly dry though. So I think what I'll do is um, put in a couple of these little bushes back here and I'm going to use basically sap green um, with a little bit of, um, isn't that pretty? Kind of a mossy color. So it's sap green right here and then to it I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm gonna put it right in on these bushes and while I'm doing this I'm gonna change change the color up a little and add a little more bright green in here underneath where there's some shadow. And you can mix in a little bit of burnt sienna in there too, just to take it down a little. I'm gonna skip around because I want some of the white to show 
or the sand to show underneath. And maybe on one side I'll have the sunny side, I'll have a little bit more light there. Maybe back up in there. And where it's coming down around the bottom, I'm going to add, I need to add a little bit of a reddish. So why don't we use a little bit of cad red? because that's going to play nice, I think, with these other colors. And we'll give it a little shadow under here. And I'll just let that kind of bleed a little bit here and there. To darken up some of this green again, look at I'm just going to add a little bit of that cobalt right over the top and send that down. And we'll let that rest for a minute and do its thing. I may bring this right across the page there. That's kind of nice. And I may have to go in again and add a little bit more dark, um, a tiny bit more. Um, I'll add a little bit now just to see if I can get away with mostly thick paint right now, not so much water on your brush because you don't. I don't need any more water. It's already dispersing enough, bleeding enough. I just need it to. Um, be, have a little bit more warm tone underneath there for some shadow. Okay, while I have that on my brush, I may just indicate some of these poems. And I might want to lose a couple of these little light spots. Okay, next, let's go ahead and do the same treatment, some light colored green in there. Add a little water to it and make a nice little, just play around and get a sh an interesting shape for that. And then while I have the same brush, I'm going to add some fronds that maybe have a little reddish, reddish cast to them. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to deepen up these fronds that are coming into this bush area here. Okay. We're not quite totally dry on top yet. So I'm playing around with other areas until that dries. Um, I guess we can do the same thing down here, may as well, while we're at it. And so maybe the first layer of shadows down here is a little bit of this earthy color. In Hawaii you can buy these t-shirts at the t-shirt shops, Red Rock shirts, and the earth there does have a little bit of a red, um, you know, some redness to it. And so when I see the red on the beach like this, in this area, it just reminds me that the soil there is has some red pigment to it. And there we go with that. And then along the road here too, there's a little bit of that. And then I can go darker with my 
browns and add a little bit of burnt umber along the road and along that shadow shape. In fact, I can even put a little of that in there now. And maybe over here, just a little indicate a little bit along the road. And again, I'm darkening these the bases of these palm trees a little bit. I'll probably go back later with my liner brush and give them some dry dry brush edges. But for right now, that's that's good. And um, in here, I may just drop a couple little dashes, dots and dashes that will look like. shadows on the ground there of whatever's there. And along here, maybe skip around a little bit too and get a few little odds and end pieces. Okay. I'd like to have a tiny bit more yellow ochre A little bit here and there. There we go. While we're talking, it's getting dark outside. Um, it's been rainy today, so. Okay, I didn't get out outside at all. All right. Try that up a little bit. And I see the edges, some of this. I'm gonna just tap it with a damp brush, no, no color on it, just clear water, damp brush, and let some of this um, Soften the edge on that a tiny bit. Okay. Well, it's still pretty damp. It's not terribly damp, it's just a little bit damp, but we're gonna go ahead and um, assume that's dry. And I'm gonna use the dioxazine purple, maybe. Maybe a little ultramarine. I just want to mix up something that's going to give me a pop of color. That's kind of nice for the palm trees. Maybe a, a little bit more ultramarine in there. And while I'm popping that in, I may add a little bit of, oh, I diluted that too much, a little bit of magenta to give it a little more color. Now, try to keep the this the sunlight on that side of this. And <clears throat> while I drop it in, I'm looking at it to see if I can add anything that'll make it any other color. I already have a pretty good mix of color, but I may just add a little bit of burnt sienna to the underside of that palm. Okay, now over here, the next one is going to be different. I don't want it exactly the same. I'm going to use a base of just a light mix of green. So add some lemon yellow to your uh, sap green, or you can add a little bit of cobalt like I'm doing here. Where's my cobalt? 
and just get a light green and do another palm. And again, you don't want the whole palm green again, so add some other colors in there for variation. And in this case, I'm adding more of a um, Um, what color is it? It's more of a um, Hansa yellow, you know, like a, let me see, permanent yellow deep or Hansa yellow to give it that yellow color. Okay. And then, so you want to vary the color and the temperature while you're at it. And remember, this is going to dry lighter, so if you need to give it an extra kick of saturation, take a good look at it and say, what is that going to look like dry? Because you may want to add some more pigment to get a deeper color. And over here, that's pretty dark. I can thin that out a little. So we're going to make this kind of a bigger shape here. And I like that shape. I'm liking everything about it, including the little highlight spots that I left there open. And maybe that frown goes all the way up into that other tree. Okay, I think I'll leave that alone and then start working on the other side. And over here I like the idea of adding a little bit of that um, first starting out with a lemony yellow. Um, And then uh, going into, that's too green. I want it more yellow, so I'm gonna switch over to this, more of this um, permanent yellow, deep color. And sock some of that in there. And then I wanna switch into my teal and add a little bit of that for variety. We have the purples and the cool colors going on there and then over here we'll just add some of the other now that's pretty wet so I'm not putting a lot of water on my brush I'm using a little bit more pigment there we go and down here, I may just use, again, that yellow, but maybe down here I'll add a little bit of burnt sienna. And really just kind of have fun and mix it up. This one over here maybe has a little more blue or purple on this side. There it's going kind of a deep, real deep olive color, mossy color, because I my brush was contaminated, but I'm not worried about it. Just keep going. You can add more blue to it if you want. Try to pick out some of that color. I still think that looks nice, and I can push some blue into it there we go. And the edges you can um, just play with to try to make them as expressive as you want for palms. And I'm no palm expert, that's for sure, but um, there are lots of different colors in there darks, lights, and they have little brown, little brown bits up there on top too that you can throw in. 
like that. Don't make them all look the same though. Okay. Um, so next, let's just go into this green and add a little more. green to that and then over here well, I've got one more on top maybe I'll put that in like that nice and bright yellow it's touching some of the other ones it's fine and down here Put a little bit of that there. Okay, so vary things. And then, since they're kind of all the same size here, well, these are a tiny bit bigger, but you really do want to vary the size and uh, as much as you can. And so I'm going to mix up my ultramarine light again with some magenta and get a deep purpley-ish color. And I'm going to go ahead and try to make a little bit too much water. I need more pigment. because I want it to I want to try to just do it in one go and not worry about having to come back in I'm just looking for an expressive shape here because this is going to go almost off the page like that and as we come towards the bottom of this thing it's going to turn into a browner shade so I'm adding some um, burnt um, uh, sorry burnt sienna to that and then underneath we've got I want to dry brush in just some palm fronds that are coming from the edge there and that's nice okay And um, some of these may look a little bit. Really, you can't judge everything until your painting's dry. But if you want to lose some edges, add a little water to some of the edges to make them soft and blur a little bit. I'm just trying to think maybe here on this one that's still a tiny bit damp, I can soften some of that to give it a little more um, whimsy, you know, a little bit of soft atmosphere. There we go. Okay, uh, the other thing I noticed is back here, I just want this land to go up there a little bit more. There we go. Going to use yellow ochre there. That's fine. All right. Now I can put in dry brush in some burnt sienna, and I may mix into that a little burnt umber. I don't want it just plain old, plain old. I want a little bit of. Ooh, look at that nice dry brush on that edge.
and right down into this green, whatever this green plant is. Okay, and maybe in there I'll make a couple little dry brush marks with, with um, this burnt sienna too. I've got a little burnt umber on there because I want it a little bit darker and if you want you can add a little neutral tint and make it really dark. Um, maybe on this side I'll try to make that one a little darker. But you get the point. Anyway, this tree is in front of that one back there, so go right over it. And just adding a little bit of texture to the to the ground here. And I'm going to do the same along the edge of this road again. This path, really. Okay. Halfway done. All right. Actually, we're more than halfway done. But I'm getting to the end here of my doing the... Uh, the palm tree trunks. <clears throat> I should have painted from left to right because now I, I have a wet surface over here that I'm going to have to avoid, but that's okay. I'm just going to try to drop in these palm trees. Now the little ones up there are further away. They can be lighter in color. And I have to decide. This one I think should be in back here. That looks good. This one can come down here a bit. All right, down in here, I'll get a little bit of shadow on that side of that plant. And we'll have to put in our shadows under these trees. So um, let's d widen this, this palm here on the bottom. They're really interesting things to look at when you look at them up close. I mean, the, the tree trunks are really, you know, highly textured and kind of fun to look at, especially when you grow up somewhere without palm trees and um, you actually take a good look at them. They're kind of interesting. Okay, so um, I'm gonna drop just a little bit of this turquoise into um, that tree there to break it up a little. And I may add a little pure pigment here to just spice that up a little bit on top. Not much, just a tad. And over here as well, a little bit here and there. Okay. Oh, I was going to do my other... The other... Um, Um, there we go. Okay, now let's give a nice purple shadow across the front and we're just about done. So 
the purple shadow is, you know, again, my ultramarine light. And that's a Holbein color that I'm trying out. And um, along with it, a little bit of magenta. It's going to give me a nice... Now this... <clears throat> um, in fact, I may add first a little bit more of the brown. I'd like to use a, um, actually on that kind of a little bit more of a reddish brown and I have kind of a little secret weapon here which is pyroline maroon I think is what I have on my palette and I may mix it with a little bit of uh, just to take out some of the redness a little bit of that ultramarine to give me a nice shadow color there So that was uh, pyroline maroon, marron, I don't know how you say it, pyroline maroon. And um, <clears throat> with a tiny bit of um, ultramarine light added in to make that dark shadow there. And that shadow I want to go right into now my purple and I just do it fast and try to make a nice shape there we go I think it's about as good as I can get maybe a little bit more right there I don't mind dropping it into there and over here I may put underneath this tree a little bit more shadow too. Maybe that shadow kind of extends that way as well. It comes maybe right down to the path. I think that looks nice. You can be creative with your shadows. Um, you know, why not? A little bit shadow there. And the last thing I might do is put some birds in, which I always do, almost always. A few birds. So in this case, you just want them to be You know, the color you can choose pretty much any color you want. I I, I tend to use um, cooler colors. Just mix up a bluish. You can add a little bit of burnt sienna, neutral tint, blue, purple, whatever you want. They are against the light sky, so you can make them dark. And I can darken these up a little more, and they'll stand out even more like I just did. Okay. Um, the other thing I see that I may want to do is add... Um, one more. I just wasn't real happy with that shape, so there we go. Now I'll just have a little look at it and see if there's anything else that stands out that I feel like. I'm going to add another dark there for... Coconut. A few coconut shapes. In these trees. Dark, dark shapes. Oh, let's see. Maybe here. Maybe this one here is... I'm 
just a little bit here. Change up that shape a little bit. Okay. Put a little dry brush on some of these guys. And I think I might even create a little dry brush on that one as if it's coming in from off outside the page. And here I just may add a little bit of Look at how that, I have a lot of water and pigment on my brush. A little splash of color there. And that's it. That's my demo of palm trees. Waikiki palms. Um, oh, one last thing. I see one more thing I want to do, and that is to add a little bit more lavender along this path. For a little shadow under there. There we go. Now you're at the beach. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs>